Happy Tuesday, Foxy listeners. I'm really excited for today's episode. I'm going to be sitting down and engaging with the very talented Blaine Olkers. We're going to be talking about things like how he became the only chief results officer, how to create 30-minute hours, what 21-second habits are and how to create them, and so much more. It's a jam-packed episode, so you're going to want to tune in. Just before we get to the episode, though, I want to do a little flashback to episode 152, where I talked about trading minutes for money. This was one of our most popular episodes. You guys have been sending so much questions in for it. And so thank you so much for that interaction. And what I'm actually going to be doing is I've created a masterclass around this. So if you're tired of always having to track your time, if you want to adjust your rates, but you're just unsure how to figure it out, if you want to work less, but you actually want to still make more, and if you wish you could take on more clients, but there's only so many hours a day and you're feeling really frustrated with it, then this masterclass is for you. So make sure you head over to our social media, both on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Make sure that you're following us because we're going to be listing it out. I'm going to have a very special pre-sale price for all of my Foxy listeners of only $27 for this masterclass, but you have to be on our social media to get that special deal. So make sure you head over and keep those questions coming in because I'll make sure that I answer those and so much more in the masterclass. So for now, sit back, grab a pen, a piece of paper, your favorite drink, and get ready to take some notes because this episode has a lot of practical tips that you're going to be able to use right away and you're going to want to write them down. I'm Tanya Fox and you're listening to Fox Talks Business Podcast. I started my career in the corporate world but always played to my own tune and loved to think outside of the box. This didn't always serve me well with the bosses so I made the decision to become an entrepreneur. And that little seed of entrepreneurial curiosity continued to grow as I branched out into retail, service, and franchise businesses. Now, I have been fortunate to have amazing successes in the last two decades, but they did not come without some really big failures and even bigger lessons learned. And that's why I started this podcast, not just to share the failures, but to show you how you can turn every failure into a success. We're going to hear from some amazing humans from around the world that are going to share their stories of the good, the bad, and the motivational entrepreneurial life has to offer. After all, life is too short to make all of the mistakes yourself. So why not learn from each other? And of course, we're going to have some fun because as I always say, well, you know what? I'll tell you that at the end of the episode. Well, hello, Foxy listeners. I'm really excited for you guys tuning in today because we have a guest that you are absolutely not going to want to miss. And you're going to want to make sure that you have a pen and paper to take some notes because he's going to be talking to us exactly about a lot of the problems that you guys have been saying that you're having. So let's jump right into it. Blaine, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thank you so much. Happy to be here. Kind of excited to be here to share a little bit. Now I'm an international podcaster because you're based out of Canada. So this is outstanding. And I hope today we can bring some value to your listeners, which tends to be business owners, which is my favorite people to talk to. So give us a little bit of a story of you to get people introduced to you a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. So I would say, um, let me share two things where I had these moments of dawning comprehension. So it's this kind of little bit, this life-changing moment when something happens and, and your life is never never the same. And so for me, I grew up in New Jersey and uh, you know, parents were good, re- you know, high school was okay, was fine. But college to me, that's where I really uh, enjoyed myself and started to kind of shine a little bit more in, in life. So I went to Purdue University. And while I was there, I always was, Uh, And maybe some of the listeners can relate. I've always been a little bit of a seeker, like a seeker of knowledge and how could I do better? What what could I do better? And I saw this little ad for an audio recording of the book called Think and Grow Rich. Now, have you you heard of that book before? Yep, I've read that book. (laughs) Okay, so so I sent away for this tape and it was an abridged version. That was an audio tape. So I'm totally dating myself. Some some listeners probably never even had an audio tape. Anyway, had the audio tape, audio tape player. And it was this guy, Earl Nightingale, actually uh, became kind of a mentor for me, reading this abridged version of Think and Grow Rich. Anyway, that led me to buy the book. 
So the moment of dawning comprehension was in reading that book and realizing that there's a little bit of a systematic way to take your thoughts <clears throat> and turn them into reality. And so later I made an acronym called White Table. What you think about, you bring about. And, and that really served me well. And, and so uh, I had a lot of success initially, even in relationships. I met my wife there at Purdue. We've been married 30 years now. Um, so that, that's been successful, uh, which is great. Um, but, but I had to have, I started having some good business success, realizing that kind of in a systematic way, which we could talk about, you, you can take your thoughts and have them appear and come to life in the physical world. So after I had a bunch of success, I actually loved the book so much. I had read it maybe 15, 16 times, and I bought one of the original 5,000 copies. Uh, and, and so when I bought that book, I'm like, oh, I'm so proud. It was like a thousand bucks, probably the, the most expensive book I ever bought. <laughs> and I got the book and I opened it up and, and, and gosh darn it, if it wasn't different, I'm like, whoa, wait, wait, I never read that. And the first page, the first two pages were these instructional pages. So I went back and I got my, my old copy. Actually, the one I read in college, I still have, um, you know, but it's, it's, it's much different than, one, than the original, right? And so when I opened up the original, it said, what do you want most? So if you have a, a copy of Think Grow Rich, the very first page, if across the top, it doesn't say, what do you want most? You, you probably had the wrong version. So I went on to read this version and follow the instructions. And at that time, my business was worth uh, maybe like $300,000, but I wanted a million dollar business. I wanted a business worth a million dollars. Thought it would take about five years, but within five months, uh, my business was worth a million dollars and I got this kind of award for it. And that happened because I took those instructions from those lost pages and apply them. So and we, we could unpack those if we want to. Uh, but, but what happened also in reading that book, I realized, well, this book is totally different because Napoleon Hill, the author, he used a lot of shouting. So like all caps, like he really wanted you to understand things. Uh, that, then later I was reading in that original book and, and, you know, then like Jesus was mentioned in there and, and I'm a Christian. And I, I like, I said, I would have remembered that. So I went and went back to the old copy. Sure enough, it was taken out. And actually, um, so, so two things happened. Once in 1960, they redid the book. He, he lived, uh, Napoleon Hill lived to 1970, but they redid the book, made it a little more politically correct, took some stuff out. Um, and, and these missing instructional pages were, were lost, I believe, you know, just in the 1940s or so. Um, so, so anyway, that, you know, anyway, that was a big moment of, of dawning comprehension. That, that's number one, that what you think about, you bring about. And the second thing that really led me to become, give me the freedom to become uh, America's only chief results officer, another thing we could talk about, uh, yeah. was that I was working at a technical job uh, at, at this time, and I came home from a business trip, and my son, Bo, he was one year old and he, he was giving me the cold shoulder. I'm like, hey, Beth, what, what, what is this? What is this cold shoulder? He says, well, you were gone so long, he forgot who you were. And I was like, what? You know, that night, it really, it hurt. Like it hurt me. And, and I realized when I was a kid, both my parents worked and I would come home. Sometimes my brother wasn't there and I'd come home to the empty house. And that night I made this kind of moment of dawning comprehension. I made a clarifying decision where I'm going to shut down all the other options. I said, I'm going to work from home. No matter what, I'm going to work from home. So it took me a year to build up the reserves and build up. I, I, I started two businesses to build up. But a year later, uh, I left my job um, and I became kind of a work from home dad. And that was like 27 years ago. And, and I never, never had to, never had to go, go back. And the cool part of that story for me too, was that actually my, my dad passed away on the day my son was born, but, but I became this like work from home dad, kind of like in honor of my dad. It kind of helped me out of all the, the bitterness of, of all that, all that stuff. Um, but anyway, that's what really gave me the time to go into self-development deeply. I started a company called Self-Fluence because I realized I'm put on the planet to help people take control of their lives by taking control of themselves. So that's what I've kind of dedicated my life to and, and built a business around with no daily operations and plenty of time for self-development and doing podcasts and things like that. So, so that's um, those are kind of two moments that kind of defined who I am and uh, who I get to be. So let's talk a little bit about what a chief results officer is, if I can say okay. it correctly. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so what happened was 
I started helping people get results, but, but more specifically in mastermind groups. So right now, one, one of the main things I do is there's mastermind groups of attorneys and dentists, and they're all and, and business owners. And so the owners who were running the mastermind said, Blaine, why don't you help them get results? Like a little bit on mindset, but a lot on implementation. I've always been really key. That's my, my genius zone is in what I call personal implementation, influencing yourself to get yourself to do more, do more of the right stuff. And so I started doing that. And then they started saying, hey, you're like our chief results officer. You're helping us get results every week. And so I said, that's a cool title. And so I did a little search and, and nobody else was using that title. So I applied to the U.S. Patent Office and I got the registered trademark, the R with the circle. Uh, and, and now no one else can use that term in the United States unless they license it for me. So that's why I can say I'm America's only chief results officer. But what a chief results officer does is helps you get kind of measurable progress in a reasonable amount of time. I, I like to do things typically looking at, uh, at weekly chunks, but sometimes you got to go all the way down to kind of daily chunks. But it's this idea of getting stuff done, implementation, rubber meets the road, uh, done is the engine of more. Uh, and, and there's, I, I didn't just study what works, what's kind of like self-evident that you could try and works right away. But I also studied kind of the brain chemicals and, and like really like wired to get stuff done. When you get stuff done, you get a little squirt of dopamine. That, that's why this one guy, great quote, I like is done is the engine of more. Uh, when you get stuff done, you get energized. You want to do more. You can do more. So anyway, that's kind of what a chief results officer does and, and what I kind of love to do. Well, and I think that this was, you know, we had talked a little bit off air. I think this is such an important topic for so many people who are out there listening because you know, what I hear, you know, doing, you know, with my own clients too, you know, new ones that come on is typically, you know, they're feeling like I just need to put more time in, or I need to put more effort in, um, because, you know, more time equals more money. And then I will, you know, have the freedom. And so that's something that's kind of seems to be ingrained in so many people. And what I love is you talk about a 30 minute hour. So can you tell us a little bit more about what that is? Uh, yeah. And I love your saying about trading money for minutes. Uh, and, and you really have to get out of that trap. And, and a lot of times the business model that people choose may not support, you know, the lifestyle that you want. So you might have to adjust it. I always, when I first started uh, my own businesses, I realized after some mistakes that I wanted businesses with no daily operations. Like I want to be the business owner, not the business runner, you know, so, so really strive to try to get things to run on their own without you, right. And still, and still make a profit. Um, but you bring up a great point. And so, uh, I, I have this saying, you know, powered by self fluence. That that's the company I started. And one of the things that, well, all the things we teach, there is nothing new for you to learn or do or be. Self fluence is the power you already have to influence yourself. And so this concept of a thirty minute hour—that's how to get an hour's worth of stuff done in just thirty minutes, where you're actually compressing time. You already know how to do it. You already did it and you may have forgotten, but we're going to bring it back to you. But before, before we unleash the power of the 30 minute hour, what I want to do is I want to bring up one caveat and I want to look at the rewards. And so the caveat here is that we're going to show you right now how to have these 30 minute hours, compressed time. But you, I caution you not to just fill up that newfound time with more work and right. more minutes for money, right? Uh, and, and that you take that time and either you do very high leverage activities or uh, what I'm going to ask you about is, is what would you do with guilt-free time? So let's say well, right now we're going to teach you how to have a 30 minute hours and you have four of those in a row. So now you just save two hours of time. You did four hours of stuff in two hours of time. And now you have two extra guilt-free hours to do whatever you want. So my question is, what would you do? For me, um, you know, I'm here in my home office. I have a Peloton bike. I like to Peloton. I would probably take like a long Peloton ride, or I also like to go hiking. I might go hiking. I like to connect. I feel like I don't have enough time to connect with old friends. So I might connect with old friends. And then the last thing I might do, which I enjoy is a good nap. So, so that's what I would do with two hours of guilt-free time. Uh, you know, what, what about you? What would you do? I think for me, usually um, I sort of have my go-tos for that. So depending 
on what time of the day it is that I get those. Um, usually I will take my free time and always spend it with my family, with my son. Um, because you know, it's, he's 15 now. So when I can get those moments, I take them because they're few and far between, you know, because mom's not cool anymore. Um, right. And then I usually try to do reading um, because I'm such an avid reader, but um, I'm really lacking on it lately. Um, so that's something I really like to do. And then I like to get out into nature. So sometimes I combine all of those things together, but, you know, I like to get out for a walk. I, you know, now that the weather's getting nicer, I like to, you know, feel the sun on my face and, and just, um, especially when that's during the day. To me, that just feels so much better when it's, you know, the middle of the day when you feel like you should be working, but you're out enjoying the sun. That makes me really appreciate, because I work from home too, it makes me appreciate a little bit more where I'm at in my life. Um, so I love taking, taking those moments. So those would probably be my three things that, you know, that I would go to. Nice. And, and, you know, I, business owners, sometimes they just run, 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 go, 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 overwhelm, burnout. And, and they don't realize, you know, the little bit of the slowdown to go fast, that little respite, that little 20 minute walk in nature, or, you know, I, I like to listen to podcasts like yours, where I just get out in nature, feel the sunshine, you know, even if it's just 20 minutes, right? Um, you're going to find that your productivity, chemically, you're be in a better shape, brain chemical wise, energy wise, and all that with that little respite with that little break, rather than just push, 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 go, go, go the whole time, you're losing productivity because you're not in an optimal or kind of peak state. So don't, you know, don't neglect yourself and don't neglect those little moments. Now you're going to have a lot more of those moments because right now we are going to talk about the 30 minute hour. And so how to get an hour's worth of stuff done in just 30 minutes. Now I said that you know how to do it and you do because there is a day, now some people this day occurs more than once a year, but typically at least once a year, there's a day where the average person is three to 10 times more productive than a normal day. Now that's 3X to 10X. We're only looking for 2X. We're only taking, we only want, you know, 60 minutes down to, down to 30, right? We're looking for 2X, but the average person is three to 10 times more productive than their average day on this day. Do you know which day that is? I feel like for me, it would be when somebody calls and says they're coming over. Cause let me tell you, I can clean my house Ooh. in a very short amount of time. Ooh, it usually is doesn't happen, but I would say for me, that's, that's the one that I'm always amazed. And I'm like, why can I do this in 30 minutes? And it takes me two hours any other time. Okay. So, so you have that, that is not the day, but okay. <laughs> you, have, you have tapped into you know, something that works, right? So, so when you have this thing, someone's coming over, someone's going to see this place. I've got to get this ready. I want to, you know, look presentable. All those feelings and emotions drive you, you know, um, to get stuff done. And also actually some of the characteristics of this day we're going to talk about you, you had in that moment, right? Okay. Uh, and, and it might be good for you to at least once a week, invite somebody over, uh, you know, because it forces you forces me to high, do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, high productivity mode. Um, but the, the day for most people, three to 10 times more productive than any other day is the day before vacation. Ah, yes. So think about the day before vacation, people get three to 10 times the amount of stuff done. Uh, and th than a normal day. And so to kind of, we want to break this day down. Now, we don't want the stress of that day, but we want to break the day down. Of why is it three to 10 times as productive? And how can we get that, just that 2X production that, that we're looking for? So I created a little acronym for that. And so what I like people to remember is the 30 minute hour, right? Day before vacation, PDF. Now, PDF is pretty easy to remember because people say, oh, print out the PDF. Hey, send me the PDF. Everyone knows that. Now, do, do you know what PDF stands for in, in that context with the document? No. Tanya's like, I didn't think there was going to be quizzes today. No, um, but I'm, I'm thinking, you know what? It's so funny because I use it so often, but it's never dawned on me to, to find out what exactly, the, what it was an abbreviation for. So it's an abbreviation for portable document format. So basically like it's a, it's something that anyone can print from any computer, right? You don't have to worry about it, 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 you know, the, the characters changing or fonts changing or anything. So portable document format, but that's not for us. That's not what it means here. So we're thinking 30 minute hour day before vacation. I have a little sign in my office day before vacation mode. Cause I want to remember that. And then the signs also says PDF, which stands for plan, delegate, focus. 
So what happens is the day before vacation, people are naturally better planners. What does that look like? Typically they plan the day before. So you can gain some 30 minute hours just by kind of laying out the plan for tomorrow, the night before. Now, typically the average person on the day before vacation gets up 30 to 60 minutes earlier than a normal day. So there again, I mean, if you wake up 30 minutes earlier, you just, you could have that first hour of the day, you know, could, could be worth two hours or, or, you know, that 30 minutes extra get, gives you that first 30 minute hour, right? So you're waking up early, you're planning, you have a clear vision for the day. Like you're like, Hey, I only have so much time. I've got to get this stuff done because I'm going out of town, right? So you have a real clear vision for the day and you're using a lot of the 80-20. Now the 80-20 rule, are you familiar with that Pareto's principle? You've heard of that, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so that is saying that 20% of what you do produces 80% of your results. And when I, when I teach anywhere, everyone agrees. I agree. I agree. Yes, we all believe that. But then no one's using it. Like people are like, oh, Blaine, I have a to-do list of a hundred items. I'm like, great, only 20 of those really matter. So let's figure out the 20 and, and work on those. And out of the 20, there's only, you know, probably five, you know, four or five that are really important. That so, so, so a lot of that is just taking the moment. It doesn't take a long time, taking the moment to kind of prioritize to 80, 20, uh, the things to, to realize what, what you don't need to get done. I would say focus on the 20, oust the 80, right? Because there's 80% that only produces 20% of the results. You want to be ousted in those all the time. But the first, so P is plan. So you've got to get some planning in. That's the first step. The second is delegate. So if you think about, you know, we always say, I, I like to say who before do. Like I, I like to say who could do this before I go do it. So I always say who before the do. So you're looking to delegate. Where could you take things off your list to create 30 minute hours? So for example, my wife also works from home, but many times in the morning, she'll say, all right, you know, you got a lot going on today. What can I do for you? And I look at my list and it's like, wow, you could run these errands. You could box this stuff up. You know, there, there's just like a bunch of things that come off my list. So if you can delegate, you can create 30 minute hours really, really quickly. So delegation is key. And you're doing a lot of that the day before vacation. But the biggest one, PDF, is focus. And this is where you can create the most 30 minute hours is that you have a fierce focus on the day before vacation. So think about the things that don't happen. No chit chat, no long emails, no, no water cooler chit chat. You, you know, you're not going down rabbit holes or chasing shiny objects because you don't have time. You don't have time to do that stuff on the day before vacation. You're, you have a fierce focus to, to get things done. Uh, you also use this one word that creates more 30 minute hours than any other word. And it's only two letters and that is no. N O. So on the day before vacation, can you do this? No. Can you do that? No, 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 no. Use the word no more often. Uh, and that will create that space and that time that you need. And especially to, you know, time wasters and shiny objects. And I, my, I call it the road south, but, but I, I say, why build a road south when you're headed north? And so my wife will always be like road south. I'm like, ah, she's right. You know, I'm going in, in the wrong direction. I'm, I'm wasting time going in, you know, not in the direction towards the things that I want. Um, so saying no, you also, the day before vacation, your focus, you stay on time, on schedule, more so than, than a normal day. And a lot of times you're setting timers and constraints that help you have the 30 minute hour, right? So for example, someone will say to me, hey, can we meet for an hour? And I'll, my immediate reaction now, because I'm looking at this sign at my desk that says day before vacation mode, I say, could we do it in 30 minutes? And almost every single time they say yes. You know, and if they say, I don't think so, they say, well, okay, let's try 45 and no, no trouble there. But, but so you're scheduling, you're, you're, you're putting in more constraints on your time, uh, you, you know, with, with, uh, with that day. And you're also using timers a lot more. So the day before vacation, you'll say, look, I only have so much time. Like I need to, I need to write this article in 30 minutes you know, tell Siri, set the timer and let's go, right? So you're setting timers, you're using timers a lot more. Uh, and then the big thing that happens for people on the day before vacation is that they use tasking. They, they are like, the supreme tasking masters. And so tasking has three components. There's single, multi, and batch. And so what happens is the day before vacation, single tasking is something like only you can do, right? So I say, I need to write an article today. Well, that's only me, 
So I need to have total concentration. I need to go into airplane mode. So meaning my phone goes into airplane mode. I shut the door. Nobody's allowed in. I close all the window browsers. I am doing just that one thing. So single tasking, I'm telling you, if you give yourself a totally distraction-free environment, you will get an hour's worth of stuff done in just 30 minutes and set a timer. I like to set a timer for 25 minutes and I got the little bonus five minutes. But but setting timers and then single tasking really remove the distractions. And it doesn't count if you can see your text messages or somebody can call you or somebody can interrupt you or that thing says you've got mail. No, you, you have to turn all that stuff off. No rings, dings, and bings for that 30 minutes to get an hour's worth of stuff done. That's single tasking. Then there's multitasking. Kind of gets a bad rap. But the key to multitasking is you can do two things at the same time without compromising the quality of either one. Right. So, for example, you know, um, you know, mentioned family time like I my kids are out of the nest now. But when the kids were here, I wanted a lot of family time, but I also wanted a lot of exercise time. But so, so multitasking is where I could right, where I taught them how to play tennis, the kids how to play tennis so we could go out and play tennis for an hour. Well, that was an hour's worth of workout, an hour of family time, two hours worth of stuff in one hour. Right. Again, compressing that time. What are two things you can do without sacrificing the quality um, day before vacation? You get in the car. I've got a 30 minute drive. Am I just going to listen to my favorite 80s music? No, I'm not. Day before vacation, I'm like 30 minutes. I can make three calls in that time. Boom, boom, boom. Let's go. Right. So I'm looking, where can I do two things at once? I want to get some exercise, but listen to a podcast. You can do those together. Maybe you're doing some chores, household stuff. You can listen to something while you're doing it. So looking for times, again, two things, multitask at the same time without losing the quality of either one. And then the last one is batch tasking. You, the day before vacation, you are the batch tasking master. That is where you batch things together. So for example, if you have uh, three errands to run, you're not going to run an errand, come back, run an errand. You're going to batch all those errands together. It's so much more efficient. Same thing with your communication with, um, Let's say I got to make five phone calls today. If I batch them all together, much more efficient than trying to chop them up through the day. All my computer work, do it at one time. Anything that has a context, like a context, like another person. So my wife works from home and we th have thoughts for each other all day long and we could interrupt each other all day long and just trash our 30 minute hours. But instead we have a shared note in our iPhone and we just add this stuff. Typically we have lunch together. So, you know, I have these ideas where I just jot them into that note. And then the context, when we're together during that time, eating lunch, uh, multitasking, eating lunch and getting stuff done with her, uh, you know, we, we're able to kind of make that much more efficient and, and have uh, more 30 minute hours. You can also use apps like, you know, listening to podcasts, I, I, I live, listen at 1.3, 1 1.5, maybe not, maybe not this podcast because I'm talking really fast, but um, you know, you might have to slow this one down, uh, but, but you can use technology to, to help you. And the biggest win of all from the day before vacation, which you want to add into your everyday life for 30 minute hours is it releases the perfectionist. That's the big key. You release the perfectionist, you know, you, you know, done is better than perfect. You, you release the perfectionist and you're just about like getting it done. Uh, and so I think that'll serve you, you know, 30 minute hours, day before vacation, PDF, plan, delegate, and focus. What do you think? I, I love that. I think there's, you know, there's, there's so much to that, but it, it's true. I think that, um, especially for, you know, entrepreneurs that have been in business for a little while, that perfection piece um, you know, really traps them. And, and I know myself have gotten trapped into it where, you know, I've spent 15 minutes on an email that really could have taken a minute, you know, but I was like, I, I you know, this is somebody new and I want to word it carefully. And, you know, and at the end of the day, I go, you know, if I just would have sent it, it probably would have been better. Um, so some of those, you know, those types of things I've learned to just let go, you know, and I, I think age yeah. kind of does that to you. You're like, whatever, this is who I am, you know, take it or leave it. Right. <laughs> that's that's I, your I like problem. That. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I, I like that. And I also like that if you find yourself in that, like, oh, I just spent 15 minutes on this email to the new person. The key is that you're, you're mindful of it and your awareness of it is like, let's use that. Let's ride better next time. Let's save that email that you just did, if you can, as a template, right? So the next time, you know, you could do it in two minutes or three minutes. Like if you find yourself like saying, I wish I would have done better, typically buried in that 
feeling is your mind trying to tell you, hey, let's make a little system. Let's grab a little something here so that next time it is faster, right? So always look for that. There's always a nugget, even in, even, you know, kind of when you're, when you fall off the horse, so to speak. I like what you said too, about, you know, when people have these task lists, because I think that's a big thing, right? People sit down and they sort of brain dump, which I think is important to do. But then at the end, they have, you know, this three page of list of stuff that they need to do, but they never go through it and go, do I, you know, and then do that assessment piece. Like you, you were talking about the 80, 20 is to do that assessment in piece and go, you know, did I just make these up to make myself look busy or is this actually going to produce anything? And, and I have something that I, you know, that I do, I have a top three that I do every day. Love and that. so I sort of sit down the day before and I go, what are three things that if these are the only things I got done, I would feel accomplished tomorrow. Um, and I sort of write those down. And now I'm actually putting time limits on them uh, of saying, you know, I want to do this by this time and this by this time. And, you know, because I, I want my day to be done at three. You know, so I, I, I sort of that. plan it out that way. And, and that helps me to, you know, I still have my big brain dump list and I'll go to that and go, okay, is there anything on here that needs to be transferred over? But I don't do anything else, but those three things. So if I find myself with, you know, spare time or, you know, a meeting ends early or whatever, I just go to that list and I feel more accomplished instead of looking at the list and going, oh my God, there's so much to do. There's just so much to do when I right. can look at my list and go, there's nothing like I did it all. I did all my things. No, that, that, that is brilliant. And, and you, you, there's so many good things to unpack in what you just said. And I love this like three by three, right? I love like get my top three done by 3 PM is so powerful and so focusing, right? You're, you're getting yourself to focus in. And when you have a moment, you just go back to the three, you know, and the, the other big, the other big thing that you, you hit upon here, and I could hear it in your voice was that when you win, you know, I, I like to say win early, win often, is that when you win chemically, you feel better, like you get more energy, right? And so if people are not winning, then you have to figure out a way to win. And there's, there's a golden ratio of winning and losing uh, for different things. Like, like when I was coaching my kids in tennis, it was 70-30. Now, now for me, in, in goal setting, it's 90-10. But, but in tennis, it was 70-30, meaning that if my, my kids needed to win about 70% of the time, now if they're winning more than that, they're winning 90% of the time, they're not learning anything new. They're just like going out there and, and putting down the beat down. You know, so they're not learning anything. So I needed to put them in higher brackets or you know, put them in a tournament you know, and say, you're going to play an age up. Wait, what do you mean that? Well, you won 10 matches in a row. It's time you're moving up an, a, lot, a level, um, you know, so, so that was, I, I'd have to have them, you know, um, not win as much. But now if they lost more than 30%, if they're losing 40% or 50% of the time, then they lose energy, interest, and they want to quit tennis. So there's this little magic ratio. And, and for me with goal setting and accomplishing stuff on a daily basis, I want like 90, 10. Like if I'm hitting hundred percent every single day, then I know, okay, I'm not stretching myself. So I want a little growth. I want a little stretch in there, you know, so, so I like to win, you know, nine out of 10 times and which is where I am. So, so the amount of things I put on my list too, if, if people are saying, I, I say I'm going to do 10 things every day and I only get three done. Well, okay. You're, you're going to feel bad about that. But if you do your method, let me pick the top three. Then I get three things. Now I'm going to work on the fourth thing, which is for tomorrow. Now I'm, a, now I'm a day ahead. And I love that. I like to help people to kind of move into this, you know, day behind to a day ahead. So, so that's key. The other big thing that you just said that I agree with 100% is that people do this mind dumping and they make these big lists and they never process the list. And like, that is like, you can't do that. Like I always tell people, if you have 15 minutes to do it, spend 10 on the list, but then spend five processing the list. Meaning you go through and you, I, I have people put an N for things they could do now or they're nano, they're really small. And that's where you start to gain some brain chemicals and some momentum of doneness, right? Uh, but then what are things you could delegate? I put a little D next to those. What are things that are important that you need to schedule? Like in the next week, they have to happen. They get an S, but most things get an L for later. Uh, you know, and they go on the later list and the later list is fine. I, some people use a journal. So like they know where all the stuff is. Some people put it into Evernote or into a list manager, but you want to have that stuff somewhere you could find it, but that stuff doesn't matter. What matters is you get into action, you start moving forward, and then you feel the energy to do more. Right. So, so anyway, great, great stuff there. You, yeah. you are right on. 
I like what, I like the analogy you use too of the kids with tennis. Cause I think that's true too. And, and I say this a lot to people is it's great to have a top three list, but if you're burning through it, then you have to take a minute to sit back and go, am I picking the easiest tasks? So like I always say, are you picking something that, you know, has been on your list for a while, you know, that drink eight glasses of water or whatever, like something that just seems to carry over. That should be one thing that's on your list. You should have one thing that's actually growing your business. So maybe that's reading, maybe that's actually sending an email out and you have to have one thing that, that scares you. Um, because you need to, like you said, you need to have that momentum. So if everything is just going super smoothly, you're stuck. So I love, I love, that's a great analogy to use for that. No, no, that's good. And, and I like how you put those in, into, into categories now. Now you're picking the three, but at the top of a bucket of, of other different things, which will keep you, you know, balanced and, and moving forward, you know, and, and the same thing, if you're hitting them three every time, right, pick the harder ones. But if you're not making them, yeah, then let's pick some easy yeah. ones. Let's, let's gain some winning momentum so you can kind of feel good about yourself and, and keep moving forward. Because if you feel bad and burned out and imposter syndrome or all any, all that stuff, you got to take that head trash out and, and you got to turn that around. You got to turn around quick because you can spiral down real quickly or you can spiral up kind of based on how your day's going. Yeah. Oh, I love that. There's so much in that. So let's talk a little bit about your 21 second habits. 21 second habits. Okay. So most success, a lot of success is based on habits. And you just talked about a great habit, which is I, I call it daily day design where someone, you know, I never let a day end without planning the next one. But a lot of people say, I can't do that. I can't create a new habit. I'm, I'm no good at creating new habits. Now, I, I will say the 21 second habit, it's about how to create new habits in 21 seconds, not 21 days. So if someone told you it takes 21 days to create a new habit, right? they lied to you. I'm we've heard, sorry. We've heard that I'm a lot. 21 sorry. days, 90 days. Like, there, yeah, there's just and, so and much And scientifically, scientifically, it's more like 60 days, like chemically, neurons, neuron-wise, it's about 60 days. But we're going to go through the hack here. Uh, so you'll be able to create them basically instantly or in 21 seconds. But the key is, like I was talking about powered by self-fluence before, is the fact that you already know how to do it, and that you are already a habit master. And this is where people miss the boat is, as, as I say, are you good at habits? No, I'm terrible. I, I, I'm terrible at creating new habits. And so the first thing we have to realize is you, you know how to do it, you're already doing it, and you can master it, right? So we're, we'll, let, let's unpack this. Um, and let me tell you a story where how I discovered 21 Second Habits was with my wife, Beth. So she luckily this is past tense, she used to have nearly daily migraine headaches, like debilitating. So the doctors said, look, you got to fill out this log, headache log every day, like what the barometric pressure is and the weather and what you ate and what are triggers and stuff. So she'd do it for a couple of days, then she would lose the log. Ouch. You know, uh, or we, we can't find the log. And then she'd have a migraine. And I'd ask her about the log. Bad move. Do not ask about the log during the migraine. Right. Rookie move. Um, but, but then one thing that, that I did realize was that she was a habit master. She, she couldn't master the headache log, but she was a master at brushing her teeth. And she brushed the that dentist recommended two minutes in the morning, two minutes at night. And so what we did is we took the headache log and we put it into the bathroom and we put her toothbrush and a pen and the toothpaste on top of the headache log. And so basically the first key to the 21 second habit is habit linking. So she linked the new habit, filling out the log to a habit, brushing her teeth that she was already a master at. Like she hadn't missed she couldn't remember a day in the last decade that she didn't brush her teeth, right? right. Um, so, so she was already a master of that. And so she went 90 days in a row filling out that log, took it back to the doctors, you know, and, and, and basically figured a bunch of stuff out. And now maybe every couple of months, she might have, have a migraine. Very, very rare for her. So, so totally, totally cool. So that's the first, the first part is habit linking to something you're already habit master. And there's tons of stuff that happen more than once a day, like brushing your teeth. There are things that happen once a day, like waking up, getting dressed, maybe for some people driving to work. Waiting um, for your coffee to brew. <laughs> waiting for your coffee to brew. I'll tell a little story about that because um, that, that's very appropriate. And, and so, but there's a second key to making this work. And so for me, I wanted to start some new habits. So I, I had two really. One, one is I have a Bible app. So I, I wanted to do that every morning. I wanted to start with that, but I wanted to take a mind shower. Like I knew 
everybody told me, told me, you know, there's all this head trash that accumulates and people wash their bodies mostly every day. But how often do you wash your mind? So I'm like, I want to do a mind shower. Like I want to do this 10 minute mind shower every day, every morning. And I just want to clean out the garbage from the news and social media and, and well-meaning friends and family who didn't know what I was working on or what, what, what is the chief results officer. Anyway, I wanted to wash all that stuff out. And so what I thought about is I said, well, what do I do? What, what am I a habit master at first thing in the morning? And guess what it is? It's the cell phone. Ah, uh, yes. So, so my smartphone, every morning without fail, I pick up the phone. Sometimes the alarm is going off on the phone. But the first thing I do is I open up that phone. And so that's what I have it linked to. So I moved all the apps off the first page. So on these smartphones, I have an iPhone. You can have pages of apps. I moved everything off except the two, the Bible app and an app called Headspace, which is what I use to do my mind shower. And I moved them all off. And so when I open my phone, I have to do those two apps before I'm allowed to touch any other buttons on there. So what I'm doing in the morning is one, I'm linking to something that happens, no willpower required. I look at that phone every morning, but the second part, so that's the linking part. The second part is I'm surfing my urge to want to see, did my kid send me a text message? What's going on, you know, maybe in the stock market, what's going on, you know, in the world? Did I, what, what emails did I get? What orders came in? Like I have all these things, like I want to know what happened while I was asleep. And, and so I surf that urge to say, I can't do that until I've done those two apps. Now, you know, I prefer, you know, 10 minutes in each, but if I'm short on time, I'll do a three minute mind shower. I'm okay with that, but it gets done every single day. And the cool thing is those apps track that. So today was day 1495 wow. in a row that I've had that habit. And so, so for more than four years now, I, I, I created that habit in 21 seconds, but I've held it for over four years. So, so that's the real key is surfing the urge. And the coffee is a great example. I was working with an attorney and she's like, well, I really love this, you know, plan your day or pick your top three to get done by three, but I never do it. And I said, well, what do you do every morning? She goes, well, I have coffee every morning. I said, great, let's have it linked to that. You can't have the first sip of coffee until the list is started. Now you can complete the list while you're drinking the coffee, but you must start the list. And wherever the coffee maker is, put a little pad of paper and a pen just in case you need it. And it's good to have a cue, a reminder of, of that thing, right? So like when I open my phone, I just see those two apps. It's, it's a reminder. But anyway, then she went on to do it day after day after day after day, again, surfing that urge, right? So with this 21 second habits, again, pick something you link to, uh, something you already have it master at to link to, and then see if there's some kind of an urge that you can surf to get you to do that. I'd start simple, start with one, um, try to make it as easy as possible, dial down the resistance. Like, like for me, I like to do 10 minutes in those two apps each, 20 minutes, but if I only have a few minutes, I'll dial it down. I'll dial it down to, to a three minute mind shower. If I have to do a one minute mind shower, I'll do it, but I've never had to do that. I always had three minutes, um, but, but dial down the resistance you share it with others, especially other people trying to create maybe that same new habit, that, that works well. Try to celebrate daily and then realize that there's a power to not breaking the chain. It's like three to four days. Like once you get like a little streak of three or four days in a row, that psychologically starts to have power. And now we're human. You're going to mess up. You're going to miss a day. Don't worry about it. Just kind of get back into the habit again and, and you know, re restart it. And now you have, now you have something to try to beat, right? Try to better your best. I always like better your best, not, not kind of competing with other people as much as, as bettering your best. But anyway, there you have it. The, the 21 second habit. I love that. And I think, you know, it's funny because I, I had watched, you know, and we're going to link to the video that you have that you, um, of your Ted talk when you talk yes. about white table. And I listened to that and I, I was really intrigued by what you were saying on the lock screen of like how many times we open our phone and, and all of that yes. other stuff. And I thought, Oh my God, I need, I need to do this. So I'm not going to give a lot of it away because I really want people to go and, and watch that and really absorb it. But I love even the idea of moving stuff because I, you know, the first thing I do, I'm, I'm that bad person. You know, the first thing I do <laughs> is pick up my phone before I even get out of bed. Cause I do use it as my alarm clock. And I know that I'm sure I could go and find an alarm clock, but I just don't, <laughs> <laughs> but I love the idea of moving all of the apps off the first page, because I do find that the first thing I do is look at that first page and see what has a bubble number. 
And then that determines where I go. So sometimes, you know, I try not to do my emails, but then I get sucked into social media and I'm looking at that or I, you know, I get sucked into other stuff. So I think moving that off is, is, you know, I'm definitely going to be, to be doing that because I think that will help you to really focus in. And, and like you said, give you that reminder as soon as you unlock your phone where you're like, oh, okay, I got to do these two things. Um, so yeah, it's not a hard thing to do because you're already, you know, it is sort of ingrained in me because sometimes I'm not even thinking about it. I shut the alarm off, I unplug it, and then I just pick it up and I start looking at it. So I really love the idea of habit linking because you're right. That does make it easier. You're already doing that one thing. So make it as easy as possible to add something else onto it. Yeah, it makes total sense. And, and that, that was a game changer for me, pushing the apps off that page. And then, and then another pro tip, if you have an iPhone, I'm, maybe you can do this in Android too, is you can put things in folders and then you oh, can I do name that a folder lot. <laughs> anything you want, right? So on my second page, uh, my social media, um, all my social media stuff is in a folder, but the name of the folder is don't do this. And so I, again, I see it now, granted, I see it initially. And then later, you know, maybe I'm not seeing it as much, but my subconscious mind is seeing it, right? That's the big thing with, with your unlock screen, you'll put something on there. And I say change it maybe every couple of weeks, but that unlock screen, you do see it between 60 and 160 times a day. So you want to start programming something we call the reticular activating system, like a, the executive secretary of your brain that lets ideas in. That's, that's really, that, that's a great way to do it. And, and that device, I mean, that smartphone, it could be so helpful, but it could be so distracting. You know, um, I love airplane mode. I tell people it's not just for airplanes. And, you know, I had a great example of, I put my phone in airplane mode from time to time. And one time I forgot, I'm like, man, did I get a lot done today? Why was today such a good day? And I looked down at my phone and I go, oh crap, it's in airplane mode for yeah. like five, six hours. So I turn it off. What do you think happened when I turned it off airplane mode and turned it back on? Yeah. Bing, 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 bing. bing, bing, bing. <laughs> all this stuff came in, right? But I will say I spent like 30 minutes triaging all that. And if I would have taken that during the day, it would have cost me three hours probably, you know? Yeah. So, so in the triage, you know, the world is going to be okay. It's, it, it's, it's, you know, uh, I mean, if you have like kids in daycare or something, you have to leave a channel open, you can, but, but for, for the, whatever you can do to shut down the rings, dings and bings, you will have a more productive and kind of better life. If you can live your life and not get pulled into all that stuff. I, I get so pulled into that. I'm, I'm weak in that area. Like, like even my internet browser, it used to be Yahoo news. And so, but then I bring up a, a browser cause I need to go do something online. And then I'm like looking at all the news stories. Right. Yeah. So I had to change that to be Google, which is just a search bar. I mean, occasionally they put something on that page, but it's just a search bar and uh, uh, you know, out of sight, out of mind. If you're trying to get rid of something, just get it for as far away from you as possible because we're, it's a slippery slope when, when that stuff yeah. is there. Well, and I think it's true. And I think there's so many people that, you know, create their own sense of ur- urgency. Um, and, and I used to do this for years. Like I'd be like, oh, somebody messaged me. I have to message them back. And I've learned to go, no, like if it, there's nobody because of the work that I do, I am, I'm not, there's nobody that's going to call me that is like, I died because you didn't like right. contact me right? I'm not a doctor. I'm not a surgeon. I'm not going to be able to help them with any of this stuff. So I thought I have to stop creating the urgency in myself of feeling like I have to answer every email as soon as it comes in. Because I started to realize when I send an email, I don't think that like I send it and I go, you know, they'll answer, you know? Um, But, you know, I think like you said, creating those little things where you're, you're taking those moments where you can just completely focus, putting your plane, your phone into airplane mode and using those a little bit more helps you to also feel more relaxed because you'll get to them. It's not like you're going to completely ignore them, but also realizing that, you know, they're not going to die if they don't talk to you, they'll be okay. You know, they'll still be there. Yeah. And your productivity is going to go up. I mean, you will have 30 minute hours if you like batch your email, right? So if you're doing email here, there versus like you respond to 10 emails, that's going to be boom, boom, boom. If you respond to one as they came in, I'm telling you, it's going to take at least twice as much time, if not more. So using that batch tasking on email, so hard to do. I'm going to admit, I have, 
I have tried to say, you know, all right, I'm only going to check email at 11 and four, you know, and, and some days, the days I do that, I'm much more productive, but I, I do slip back into, uh, in, into checking it more than that. Yeah. And I mean, it's a constant thing. I, I only check my email twice a day. So I check it around 11 nice. because I find if I check it first thing in the morning, I get too distracted. So I check it around 11 Perfect. and then I check it a couple of hours before the end of my day, but I was getting stuck on it because the notifications would show up on my phone. So I would get that little sneak peek of what they emailed oh, me about. Yeah. And then I would be like, oh. And so I shut off the sneak peek, but I would see the name. And then I'd be like, oh, I wonder what they want. So now I just don't have the email come to my phone. I just turn that off only when I'm away. And I know like, you know, I'm, I'm not there and my phone is my communication. But yeah, it's really easy to sort of, you know, you sort of glance down and you're like, oh, maybe I should look at that or maybe I should answer that. But meanwhile, right. you're losing productivity on what it was you were actually working on. So I love that I, tip. Yeah. I mean, and, and you have to be careful, you know, neurons that, that, uh, you know, fire together, wire together. So sometimes you, you get into that, like you feel good about yourself. Like people are emailing me. I'm, I feel important or whatever. You have to be careful, you know, that you don't fall into some of that stuff. Um, you, you know, as well, and really keep that time for you, that, that high productivity time uh, for yourself is, is so key. Uh, you, you get a lot more time and you can serve more people if you're more effective in, in your own, you know, time management, so to speak. Yeah. So if people are out there and they're going, okay, this all really sounds great, but I need a little bit more. Tell us where the best place is for them to find you. And uh, probably for me, the easiest is I, I did a TEDx talk uh, a few years ago, really enjoyed it. It was nerve wracking, but, but you have to, if for people that don't know, Ted, Ted and TEDx is where you make a presentation, but it's just one big idea and it has to be within a certain number of minutes. I think mine's like 14 minutes. Yeah. 14, uh, anyway, 47, so the easiest, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the easiest thing is just go to Blaine TEDx. So B L A I N E T E D X.com. You can opt in for that. Then uh, we'll get to know each other from that. You, you'll get the, a transcript of it. It's been translated in a couple of languages and you'll get to watch it, watch the TEDx talk at your leisure, but then we'll be connected. So if I can help you in any way, would, would love to do that. Perfect. Well, and we'll make sure that we have all of the links to where people can find you, um, your website, your social media, and of course, uh, that video, because I'm telling you listeners, you want to go and watch it. It was, it was a great video. I really enjoyed it. So I want, but I'm not giving it away. So you're going to have to go watch it to see why I say all of those things. Nice. Nice. Well, and, and I also, you know, speaking of how you, how nice you are, I did want to thank you for one, having me on, but also for all the work you're putting into this, right? These podcasts to run them and get guests and edit and post it. It's a lot of work. So I want to thank you for that, oh, but also you. let you know that you're putting it online and that you have what I like to call the results ripple and that your podcast, what, what this episode we're making right now will touch lives not yet born because you stepped up to do this podcast. So there's somebody who's not even born yet, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, maybe they're, maybe they're on the moon, you know, 50 years from now, and they're going to hear this information. It's going to touch them and it's going to help them get better results for themselves and in their business. So I just want to thank you for having me on and, and thank you for all that you do. Oh, well, thank you so much. That, that means a lot to me. I appreciate that. It is, it's definitely a labor of love. So I've, I've, I've gotten as much as I've given, I will say that in getting to meet amazing people like yourself. And, um, so it's, uh, it's not a hard thing to do. It is hard to do, but it's not a hard thing to do. If that makes sense to everybody. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> Blaine, thank you so much for spending time with me today. I've really enjoyed it. I think there is so much in this episode. I know myself have so many notes and I can't wait to go. Now I'm going to remember what a PDF is for when you send out a document, but more importantly, when you plan, delegate and focus, I will remember that one more than I remember the other one because I've already forgotten the other one, but I'll Google it. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is awesome. Um, you know, and I'll end with this. The bad news, the bad news is time flies. The good news, you're the pilot. So Love take, that. take control and, and, uh, and, and make it a great day. Thank you so much. Well, there was so much packed in today's episode. So thank you so much to Blaine for taking time out of his day to share with us all of this great advice. 
I want to know what your biggest takeaway was from this episode. So head to our social media and look for the post for this episode and let me know what was the thing that really stuck with you. I'm so interested to hear. And while you're there, don't forget to make sure that you follow us so that you can get all of the information, not only of our upcoming episodes, but as well as our Stop Trading Minutes for Money Masterclass, which is going to be coming out. You're not going to want to miss that. And you have to be following us on social media to get the special deal. You can also head to our website at foxtalksbusiness.ca, click on blogs on the left-hand side of the page, and you will be able to get all of the show notes as well as links to contact Blaine and, you know, just follow him and learn more from him as well as any resources that he had for us. So you're not going to want to miss out on that. So no matter what it is that you decide to do with the rest of your day, whether you are figuring out how to do 30 minutes hours, or anything else that we discussed in this episode, make sure that you find time to have fun. But take the whole hour. Because as I always say, if you're not having fun, why are you doing it? <laughs>